All right, it's my first day of work as a new flight attendant and I'm working. I'm sitting at home working. <laughs> I'm all confused. Today is my very first day as a new flight attendant and I'm on reserve. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what reserve means for flight attendants. If you've never understood what reserve means, I'm gonna explain all the ins and outs that I'm learning today because it's three o'clock and I've been working all day and getting paid for working in my other businesses while I'm being a flight attendant. Clearly I'm not at 35,000 feet. I'm at, I don't know, whatever the sea level is here. So um, so I, just, to, just to explain kind of how this works, um, you know, as a brand new flight attendant, um, probably any airline, you're gonna be placed on what is called reserve. Now reserve is called basically on call. You're on call and you're given a time frame of when you're on call. It's not all day, but it's 13 hours. That's a big chunk. So my, my on call period, my reserve period started at 5 a.m. this morning and it goes all the way until 6 p.m. at night. That's right, 13 hours. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that I'm sitting at home and my company has the option to call me in the event they need me. So let's go through some of the, the situations when they may need me. So when they build out flight attendant schedules for the whole month, and I'll talk about all that stuff later about how they build it and bidding and tips and tricks and stuff like that, but this is all about reserve and my very first day. So. They build out a whole schedule for the whole month of flight attendants into your certain base. They have a certain number of flight attendants and all the flight attendants at that base, basically most of them, 90% of them, know what their schedule is gonna be like for the month of whatever. So they get their schedule and they know what day they're gonna work, what time they're gonna work, what flight they're gonna work, and they know that for the whole month. Now the other 10% of people, me, are on what's called all reserve. And what that means is, there's a group of people that basically stand by, they sit wherever, at home or wherever they want, and in the event that they are needed, they will be called. So for example, um, I, if, someone, if someone gets sick, okay? If someone gets sick, um, then they call in to a crew service number and then the crew services will call someone on reserve and say, hey, you need to show up at this time to work this flight and you'll be done. Or there are certain situations where maybe there is a, a, there's rules for flight attendants where they can only work a certain number of flight hours or hours per day. Once that happens, and that's a whole algorithm. I'm not gonna go into that because it's kind of confusing, but basically it means that if you go over the amount of time that you're supposed to work one day, you're not able to fly and they're gonna have to call somebody else to replace you. So those are really the, the only situations, like maybe you're sitting in weather on the, the, the runway or the tarmac and you're sitting there, sitting there for hours and hours and all of a sudden you hit your max limit. Well, guess what? The plane has to return and they have to call someone on reserve to come fill that flight attendant spot. So those are really the situations. There's, there's other ones, but those are the main ones. So the 10% of us that are sitting at home waiting are literally just waiting to be called up. Now you're probably thinking, well, like what happens? Like where they call you like right away and you have to be at the airport right away? Well, no, this airline gives you 90 minutes. So they give they call you and then at the time they call you you have 90 minutes to be at the gate not at the airport not in the airport parking lot not at TSA at the gate i live about 50 minutes from the airport that i'm working at and so therefore 90 minutes only gives me 40 minutes to get all my stuff maybe shower maybe get dressed then obviously the drive time is included and then the other time at the end is I have to get park my car, I have to walk a bit, get through the airport, get through security, and get to the gate. So it's not a lot of time. So in a way, being on reserve, you're kind of restricted about what you can do. You can't go on a road trip, you can't go too far away from where you're supposed to be at the airport. And one of the tips that I've been given is make sure you always bring your bag and your, your uniform. So just in case you get called, you can head to the airport and change and then be at the gate and you don't have to worry about it. So if you're out running groceries, like earlier today I went and worked out, um, 
obviously you have to always have your phone. And so that's really how, how it works. You have 90 minutes to be at the gate and that's cool, right? Now, some people are kind of upset because they wanted to work more. They wanted to um, be on an airplane working, right? So one thing is, the question is, do you get paid while you're on reserve? Well, yes. Now, do you get paid for 13 hours? No. That's the tricky part. You're only getting paid for a certain number of hours, and this airline sets three and a half. So if I don't get called for the 13-hour period I'm sitting today, I'm technically working right now, and I don't get called at 6 p.m., I'll get paid three and a half hours of work. Now, the cool thing of this airline is you're guaranteed a minimum number of 75 hours for the month. Um, so three and a half times 10 is 35 hours. So if you sit on reserve for 10 days out of the month, you get 35 hours. Well, if you don't hit that 75, well, guess what? You're still going to get paid 75. If you do get called, you get a certain number of hours based off the flying time, not the time that you're at the airport or sitting. That's a whole other thing. I'll go through that in a different video. But what your flying time counts as called block hours. And so those accumulate. So if you go to the airport, you're sitting in reserve for 10 hours, they call you, you go to the airport and you have a flight that's up and back, and that's a total of seven hours, or I guess maybe it wouldn't be that long, five hours. Well, instead of getting paid three and a half hours that day, I would get paid five hours because five is greater than three and a half. Anyway, so the other thing is you don't know where you're going. So I guess as a flight attendant, like you could literally just be called and go anywhere. It just depends on when they need you. Um, so there are tips and tricks on figuring out when you'll get called. So you might be thinking like, well, if you're on reserve for five days of the week, like you have to sit at home for five days. It's like, well, no, like I said, you can still go out and get groceries. You just have to stay close to home and always carry a bag. But there are little ways to know most likely when you'll get called. So again, remember the reasons you might get called is for someone gets sick or someone times out on a flight or other situations. But if there's 10% of the people, and let's just say there's 10 people, let's just use round numbers. There's 100 people at our base and 10 people are on reserve for the whole month, including me. Well, there's a report that the airline prints out that is gives you the list of who's going to get called next. And it's a whole algorithm. I'm not going to go into it. It's an algorithm. Um, it's based off the number of hours that you've flown. At the beginning of the month, it's based off highest seniority. I don't know why. Um, so at the beginning of the month, I sit at the very bottom of the list because <laughs> guess what? I have the lowest seniority, right? So I'm at the very bottom of the list and um, I probably won't get called in for a while because there are other people that get called in. So as people get sick and call in, they'll go through that person and then they'll go through that person, they'll go through that person. And eventually I will get called, but you can refresh this report and you'll know the likelihood of you getting called. So if I'm number six in the list, well, I know that five other people have to get called before my number is up. So that can give you some, I guess, better comfortability. But again, if four people get sick in one day, which is rare, well, you still have to be ready. You can't just say, well, I thought it was number five in the list. I wasn't going to get called. Well, you still got to be ready. So, um, so yeah, there are ways to understand when you'll get called. So you can kind of gauge like, okay, I'm number five on the list and today I probably won't get called. But, and then at, like, as your name starts moving to the top, and again, there's a whole algorithm that calculates this throughout the whole month. It's based off flying hours. And eventually your name, your, your name will get put back into the system and depending on what, what's needed and who calls out. And again, so that's how it's tracked. And so you can kind of track and say, okay, well, I'm coming up on the list. I'm probably gonna get called. So again, you can kind of track on when you're gonna get called out. Another question I got was, how long after you're hired do you have to be on reserve? Because Corey, that sounds crazy. Like I kind of wanna know what days I'm flying, when I'm flying, when I'm gonna be home. Well, again, most airlines all have different reserve periods. I know some bigger airlines have less amount of days that you have to be in reserve. And then like this airline, it's pretty much 100% reserve for probably your first year at least. And again, that depends on a lot of factors, including the base that you're at. If you're at a base that gets a lot of new flight attendants on a regular basis, well, usually that means that more people are under you on a, reserve, on a seniority basis. And that means those people will probably start getting reserve trips and you might start getting trips where you know what you're doing. Now, 
I run multiple businesses. I do not want to fly a lot. This schedule is something that I knew about, that I knew was going to happen. So guess what? I'm operating all of my other businesses here in my home office while I'm on reserve. And all of my businesses, I can stop what I'm doing whenever I want and shift it the next day or reschedule it because I'm very flexible. So I knew that this would fit in perfectly with what I wanna do. So if I get called up today, cool. I can stop what I'm doing, I can stop this video, and I can restart the video when I get back, or I can start the projects that I'm doing when I get back, or the next day. So again, this fits perfectly with what I wanna do because I'll be on reserve and I can sit here and get paid to sit here in my home office and not have to worry about going in. Yeah, the other thing is, my bag is packed, is ready to go. My uniform is right behind here. My bag is packed. I have all of my stuff I need. So if they call me, I can quickly put on my uniform and be on my way and I'll be there in 90 minutes. So I have it planned out perfectly. Um, if I wanna to go to the beach, which is gonna be kind of a risk because the beach is about 15 minutes away and 15 minutes further away, I'll just have to take my bag with me in case they call me and have my phone with me. If they call me, guess what? I'm going to the bathroom, I'm changing, well, first I'm probably gonna wipe the sweat off my body, I'll have to figure that out. If you know any options about maybe a, a body wash without the water, <laughs> I'm gonna learn all these things as I go. But again, I, I have my bag with me wherever I go if I'm making errands and if they call me, I gotta get to the airport. So that's what reserve is. I'm sitting here in my home office getting paid right now um, for working as a flight attendant. I have no idea how many hours I'll get this month. I'll have no idea how many hours I get the next month, but I guess the bidding process is a bit different. This is my first month being a flight attendant, so I was given a schedule. I think for the whole month, it's June 2023. I think I only have 12 days, now we're counting Saturday and Sunday here, that, I have, that I'm not working. But the other 18 days, I'm on, and I'm on 100% reserve. It starts at 5 a.m. and ends at 6 p.m. every day. Now, there are some reserve periods you can pick later in the day, but at this base, it kind of doesn't matter because there's not that many flights out in the afternoon. So it's pretty much all the flights are in the morning. Um, and then I'll just continue doing that. So I'll have to figure out the bidding process because, yeah, there are weeks coming up where I don't want to have to work four or five, six days out of every week. I want to have a whole week off so I can take a vacation or travel and not have to worry about being here, sitting here in my office on reserve. So that's reserve. I'm working, I'm getting paid. Today's my first day of reserve. That's the way my schedule is gonna be for the next, who knows. But when I do fly, I'll share with you some fun stories. But again, my name is Corey Calvin. I was a corporate executive, went from the boardroom to the jump seat. I'm sharing my experience as I go, moving from the corporate world to becoming a flight attendant, a junior flight attendant at the age of 44. If you wanna follow along my content, make sure you subscribe somewhere down below. I don't know. Um, like this video and uh, leave a comment if you know where I can get some like body scrubs to do a quick wash on my way to the airport. All right, thanks for following along and we'll chat with you real soon.